is it really worth it to record and create content using ProRes. ProRes, also known as Apple ProRes, is a high quality, visually lossless format that is used to record video. It was introduced by Apple in 2007 with the release of Final Cut 2. Is it really worth it to still record in the format today? In short, yes, but there are some caveats to it. For example, Apple released this phone, the Apple 13 Pro Max, and introduced the ability for you to record high quality 4K in Apple ProRes. This obviously allows more creative control in the post-production process, so you can push the colors, obviously, to certain limitations, especially since it's now producing 10-bit video. Some would argue and say that it isn't worth it to record in ProRes anymore because there are so many new formats that you can actually capture your video in, like ProRes RAW or B-RAW, which gives you the ability to have more creative freedom in the post-production process. But as a content creator and video editor, you need to consider some of the pros that ProRes still has to offer today. So for example, I'm using my Lumix G7 to record this content right now. Under normal circumstances, I record directly right into the SD card. The Lumix G7 records in a high quality 4K video format at 3840 by 2160 at obviously 30 frames per second. With my workflow and with most of your guys' workflow, you probably record in a MP4 format, especially if you're using the Lumix G7. Obviously, when you record in 4K, the file size is obviously gonna be a lot larger, which means one of two things. You can obviously just drag and drop those files straight into your video editing program, whether you use DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro. Now you're not doing anything wrong by just obviously dragging and dropping that file into your video editing program and getting your video edit started. But the main issue that may occur is very laggy playback, especially at two or four X speed if you're a fast video editor like me. But if you are to transcode these files into let's say a ProRes LT, which is one of the smaller files that ProRes offers, you're going to have a lot smoother playback. This has to do with the fact that ProRes was really designed for video editing programs like Final Cut and Premiere Pro. ProRes really offers the flexibility of being able to obviously play back your footage a lot nicer and faster. This becomes more apparent, especially if you're editing 6K or even 8K video files. If you were using Premiere Pro, your workstation may not be able to handle a 8K file right off the bat. You might need to create proxies. And when you create proxies, one of the video codecs that's recommended is Apple ProRes. Those are just some of the pros you need to consider when you're starting your video edit and you need to obviously edit other files and other sources that you have. But like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are some caveats to you using ProRes. Now, depending on what version you're transcoding or possibly recording your video in in ProRes, it's going to greatly affect the size of the file. To best explain this, we need to actually look at Apple's white paper on the ProRes format. The highest quality version of ProRes for 4444 image sources with a very high data rate to preserve the detail and high dynamic range imagery when recording at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second requires a target data rate of 500 megabits per second. And if you're recording in this format for a long period of time, you're going to need a lot of storage around in order for you to handle that, obviously, as well as in the post-production workflow that you have. But if you're like me, obviously I can't even record in that format. I don't have a camera that has an acceptable output for me to even record into an external source. So in this case, me using my G7, I can actually take advantage of the Apple ProRes 422 format, which still requires 102 megabits per second when you're recording at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, which actually isn't much, but if you're recording in 4K, you're gonna need to multiply that. In my scenario, in this case, I'm actually currently right now recording into my Atomos Shogun that I have over here to my left, and one minute of 4K 30 frames per second, Apple ProRes 422 LT is close to two gigabytes, if not more, depending obviously on the scenario, if there's a lot of moving images, a lot of different things going on in the background, this is going to change that. Whereas if I record straight into my camera and record for one minute, it would be less than a gigabyte. This is probably obviously the biggest concern for most of you guys out there, and probably one of the reasons you don't record in ProRes and maybe you shouldn't is due to the fact that the storage of these files is gonna be large and obviously depending on how long your project is and what you're doing, it's going to greatly affect, obviously if you even have the space on your computer 
to store these large video files. And obviously another thing to consider is if you're recording in, let's say an H.264 format, like my Lumix G7 does, and you're then having to transcode that into, uh, let's say a ProRes 422 LT, which is a smaller and lighter format of the Apple ProRes family, it's still going to require time for you to actually do that. And obviously depending on how old your system is, it can take quite a bit of time in order for you to transcode that footage from an H.264 format over into ProRes. This was actually one of my biggest concerns when recording in ProRes, just due to the fact of the large file sizes but for some projects, you may need to do that, especially if you're trying to capture the highest quality of video from your camera or possibly camera systems that you're using to create your projects. If you're really trying to push the colors in post-production, maybe you're doing a lot of After Effects or possibly some VFX where you need high quality video files in order for you to apply certain effects, ProRes is probably going to be necessary for you, which is one of the reasons why I still think to this day it is necessary, it just depends on your use case. It depends on what you're going to be accomplishing at the end of the day. But if you don't have the storage capacity to hold these files, possibly not even the processing ability, you may just have to consider using the format that you're currently recording in. Every five years or so, we're getting newer and newer codecs, the ability to record raw where it was impossible before unless you had a really expensive $50,000 camera but it's just getting more and more enticing to use these high quality video compression formats. So just consider these facts before starting any project and recording in Apple ProRes or possibly in a simpler H.264 or even H.265. If you didn't catch me saying this earlier before in the video, this whole video is actually being recorded in Apple ProRes 422LT. I have a one terabyte hard drive connected to my Atomos and I'm trying to see and test the ability and the differences, obviously, especially in the post-production workflow that I have already and seeing if it's even worth it for me. Especially if you're recording YouTube videos, you know, you're doing talking head content, maybe you're doing some tutorials or maybe you're doing some really cool short form content or possibly even shooting a short film it's probably going to be required for you to record in a higher quality format. And if you got to the end of this video, I really greatly appreciate it. Please leave a comment down below if you have any other questions. And if you have any other information you wanna learn, there's more videos that you can watch from me right here. And as always, have a great day.